we need to do, we need to recreate our circle, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this loop a little bit closer to the top because that way I don't have more, you know, too much jiggle room, right? So let's do this again. We got doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we've got nine here. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we'll go a little slower on this one. And make sure we can get it. So that's not a, that's a pretty good little circle there. I think that's one of the best ones I've ever done. Um, so what we did was we drew a circle. We drew a lot of circles lately, right? And this is a circle in space. And for us to analyze a circle, what we need to do is be more exact with our measurements. And what we end up doing is we end up throwing a grid Cartesian coordinate system on the circle with zero zero being at the center of the circle and as soon as we do that we put a Cartesian coordinate system on there that we've done over the last I guess six videos five or six videos is what it does it basically breaks the circle into four quadrants right so let's throw our grid on here and again I'm gonna bring out my trusty little lever right or level not lever level right and let's throw our grid on here and we're going to put an x and y axis right so let's throw our x y axis on here here's our x axis And here's our y-axis. Right. And we talked about this a lot, right? Our this is our x-axis and for a unit circle, this is our going to be our cos theta. And this is our y-axis. And for a unit circle, we're basically going to call this sine theta, right? Now, what we've done by creating this grid, we've broken this thing down into four quadrants, right? One, well, I guess one, two, three, four, right? And that allows us to analyze the circle. And we talked about, you know, when we we're talking about the trig ratios and we're graphing them. Basically, if we're standing, if we're stand, standing at the edge here, right, at this point here, as we move around the circle, our sine theta is basically mapping out what our y coordinate is going to be, right? And our cos theta is mapping out what our x coordinate is going to be, going back again, right? So. This is, you know, sort of where we've left off and, you know, some of the stuff we've talked about and a lot more, right? And the way we should think about this is we're using the circle right now to allow us to analyze the ideal cyclic functions, right? Sine, cosine, and tangent, the three basic trig functions. But the circle can be anything we want it to be, right? We can think of the circle as any type of system, anything that we want to take a look at. And for us to analyze the circle, what we end up doing is breaking it down into smaller segments, breaking it down into a piecemeal and taking a look at what happens in certain certain segments of the system, of the circle, 
right? So for example, if this thing was, you know, us doing financial reporting for a corporation, a corporation does, you know, every year they do quarterly reports, right? So for us to go from here to here, that would be one quarter, right? Because we've broken a whole system, a year's worth of finances into quarters, right? So each one of these nodes, right? would be one quarterly report. Well, beyond that, what we want to do, we want to take a look at maybe what happens on a monthly basis, right? Monthly basis would be us taking the circle and breaking it down into 12 even pieces, right? And that would be taking a look at it on a monthly basis, right? It could be a pizza, this circle, or a piece of pie where people come in into, you know, you're throwing a party, you want to give everyone an equal piece you break it down into you know, the number of people that there are, right? You give everyone a, their equal share, right? So what we're going to do right now is break the circle down into smaller pieces. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these quadrants and break the quadrant in half, right? That makes sense, that's the first first step. If we're gonna, if we're gonna try to break the circle down, we're not gonna go and break it down into 100 pieces right away. We're going to break this quadrant down into two pieces, right? So right now, what we have is right now, what we have is going around the circle. Full circle is 360 degrees. It's also equal to two pi, right? Each quadrant ended up being 90 degrees, right? Because 360 divided by four is 90. So we have one quadrant that's 90 degrees. What we're going to do right now in this quadrant is take this 90 degrees and cut it in half, which means we're going to have two 45 segments. Okay, so let's draw that. Let's draw that line in where we're cutting this thing. And what we're going to do is make a triangle again. And what that triangle is going to be is going to be one of our special triangles. Okay. So 45 degrees is, you know, if I had a protractor, I, you know, put my protractor down here, measure 45 degrees and go across, right? But that's easily done with 45 because all I have to do is just hit the grid where my grid, the quad, uh, the crosshairs are, right? For the X's and the Y's. So I'm just going to go straight down 45 degrees. So let's go down here. And I'm just going to do this in blue. So it comes out nice and dark, right? So right now, this angle here is 45 degrees, right? I'm going to close off my triangle. I'm going to make this a 90 degree triangle. So what we've done right now is broken 90 degrees into 45 and 45. So we've taken one segment and broken it down into two pieces, right? Now, what happens with right angle triangles is this guy's a right angle, right? And for any triangle, the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So if this is 45, that's 90 degrees. This angle up here ends up being 45 degrees. And this is our first special triangle that we have to learn. Okay, so this is 45 degrees as well. Okay, now what we end up doing for our calculations, we wanna work in radians, right? For our degree measurements, because radians are more useful. And we can do a simple calculation to figure out what 45 degrees is in radius. We can either use 
our formula that we had before, which was 360 degrees over 2 pi has to equal whatever degrees we have here over radians, right? And since we're trying to figure out what 45 degrees is in radians, we can put in 45 here and do our cross multiplication. And we did uh, a couple of calculations with this in a previous video, right? But there's an easier way or a quicker way to figure out what 45 degrees is in radians. And this is a method that we're going to use to generate the table as we move around the circle for our two special triangles. This is the first one, 45, 90, 45. The other one is going to be 30, 90, and 60, or 30, 16, 90, right? 45, 45, 90. The, the calculation that we're going to use to figure out, to generate the table of what our coordinates are for those special triangles basically works like this. To go half a circle is 180 degrees. For us, to get to 45 degrees, we divide 180 by 4. Since 180 is the same as pi in radians, we have to be consistent. So we're going to divide pi by 4 to get to 45. So 45 degrees is pi over 4. I hope that makes sense. We'll delve a lot deeper into this, right? So 180 degrees divided by 4 gives you 45 degrees, right? Well, 180 degrees is the same thing as pi in radians, right? So 45 degrees is going to be pi divided by 4. We have to be consistent. Math is very symmetrical, right? So 45 degrees ends up being pi over 4. Okay. And that's us right now breaking this quadrant into two pieces. So we've got 45, 45, and we can continue this and break this circle or the system, each quadrant into halves, into two pieces. So all of a sudden we've gone from having four pieces, right? We started off with a circle, which was one piece, no grid on there. We put a grid on there, breaks it down into four pieces, right? 90, 90, 90, 90, gives us 360. Now what we did was we broke down the 90 into two even pieces, right? Boof, boof. Now we're going to have eight pieces, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty simple. Eight times 45, 360, right? I hope so anyway. So what we've done, we've broken our circle down into eight pieces. And what we do is we're going to start analyzing or taking a look at what our coordinate is when we get to here, right? When we get to uh, 45 degrees around the circle, when we get to 90 degrees, when we get to 45 plus 90 is 135, when we get to 135 degrees, 180, 180 plus 45, 225, 270, 315, right? So we're going to, those are some of the special angles that we're going to look at that we generate from the special triangle. Okay. Now, the other special triangle that we have, we broke this thing down into two pieces from one piece, right? 90 degrees to two pieces. Well, what we're going to do is break it down into three pieces, right? It makes sense. We're going to work our way down, right? Get break it down into tighter, smaller, and smaller pieces. Later on, maybe we could break it down into four pieces, four even pieces, right? Or five even pieces, or six even pieces. All of those could be our special triangles, depending on, you know, what type of system we're analyzing. For us right now, and in general, in Math 12, or basically high school mathematics, the two special triangles we're going to take a look at is 45, 45, 90, and the other one, if we break down 90 degrees into three even pieces, what happens is we need 30 degrees here, right? Because 90 divided by 3 is 30. So what we end up doing is taking a look at a 30 degree triangle here 
and we have a 90 here. So 30 plus 90 is 120. Some of the angles in a triangle have to equal 180. So this angle up here ends up being 60 degrees. So the other special triangle we have is 30, 60, 90. Okay. And what I'm going to do, so we're not busy in this quadrant, I'm going to break this quadrant down into three even pieces. Okay. And we're going to do approximate for this one because, again, it's, uh, it's not as easy as the 45 because 45, all I'm doing is going down the crosshairs of the grids, right? Easy to make sure it's 45 degrees. For this one, I'm going to approximate it. If I had a protractor, I lay down my protractor and measure off 30 degrees and I would have a tri you know, the special triangles, right? So this is going to be, let's see, one, two, three, four, so this and one, two, three, four, that, one, two, so one, two, three, four, that. so that should be about three pieces. Let's draw the set. So let's assume this is three even pieces, this quadrant, right? That means each one of these angles is 30 degrees. So I just broke this into two pieces. We can just imagine me breaking this down into three pieces, right? And each angle is going to be 30 degrees, same deal, right? I can do the same thing down here, and we will be doing the same thing down there and down here, right? So each one of these angles is 30 degrees, right? Now I'm not going to bother putting the angle here because it's going to get messy and what I'm going to do I'm going to close off my triangle here right generate a triangle here So this ends up being, this angle here is 90 degrees. Right. So 30 plus 90 is 120. Subtract that from 180, you get 60. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at these guys and find out what they are in radians. And what we could do again is um, use our formula that we've got, right? We could use this. To do our cross multiplication, put 30 degrees here, do a cross multiplication, find out what 30 degrees is in radians. And we could do the same thing with 60 degrees, right? But yeah, let's use this method because we're gonna end up using this method a lot more to generate the table and analyze our coordinates, what happens to us as we move around the circle, right? So we're going to do the same thing. From here to go to here, half a circle is 180 degrees. So we ask ourselves, what do we do to 180 to get to 30? And the answer is divide by 6, right? So 180 divided by 6 gives us 30. So 180 degrees divided by six gives us 30 degrees, right? 18 divided by six is three and you add a zero, right? Well, to be consistent, to be symmetrical, 180 is pi. So we're gonna divide pi by six, right? So 30 degrees is pi over six. And 60 degrees, what do we do to 180 degrees to get to 60? What do we do to 180 to get to 60? We divide by three, right? So 180 divided by three is 60 degrees. Well, that's the same thing here. Pi divided by three. 
that's equivalent to 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is pi over 3. Okay. And this same thing works here. If I closed off this triangle, this is 30 here and 30 here, so that makes it 60. If I close off this triangle, I'm going to have 90 degrees here. So 60, 90, that gives me 150. So this guy has to be 30. So I'm, I'm not going to draw this triangle here because it's going to be too busy. Okay. So what happens is another 60, 30, 90, or 30, 60, 90 is going to break this thing into our three pieces that we want, right? And the beauty of uh, triangles is 30, 60, 90 is the same thing as 60, 30, 90, right? The ratios stay the same. It, they're basically similar triangles, right? Just flipped a little bit. So this right now, we took a full circle, one circle. We broke it down into four pieces. We took those four pieces. We broke each four piece down to two pieces. So all of a sudden our circles got um, eight pieces and we can take our circle and break each quadrant down into three pieces so if we do the whole circle with 30 60 90 triangle with this special triangle what we end up having is 12 pieces right three 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 so four times three is 12 pieces so every stop that we make is one twelfth of the way if we're doing doing stops here right for the whole circle or we can do a combination of each right and that's the way you should really think about it is and that's the way we're going to lay down our table that we're going to lay down uh, for us to analyze what happens with our coordinate system with sine theta cos theta and tan theta as we move around the circle okay so basically if we you know, put 45 degrees and 30 and 60 degrees, this one, into one quadrant, what we end up having is this. It's going to look like this. And this guy's going to go straight down. So this thing right now is breaking this quadrant down into two pieces. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do 30 degrees as well. Break this quadrant down into three pieces. And it's going to look something like this anyway, approximately, because I don't have my projector here. One, two, three, four, a bit. So let's throw that there. One, two, three, four, a bit. Let's throw that there. Okay. So this thing is going to look like. Again, really important to keep in mind that we could have decided to break each quadrant down into four even pieces and that would be a special triangle or five even pieces or six even pieces whatever whatever we need to analyze whatever system we want to analyze right because right now we're taking a look at a generic system which is basically a circle right it's the most simplistic system that we can come up with um, to analyze cyclic functions or any type of system, right? Uh, we're just going to start off from, you know, having one and then having, you know, if you wanted to, you could have two, right? Just draw an x-axis and that would have been hemispheres, right? Two, two sides of a circle and then we do a y-axis. We'll break into four pieces, break into eight pieces, break into 12 pieces, whatever, 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 right? And what we're going to do is in the future video, generate the table to find out what our sine, cos, and tan is going to be for every stop we make. And we're going to put 30 degrees here at these locations. Right? So what we're going to do right now is figure out what sine, cos, and tan are for this special triangle, 45, 90, 45. And for this triangle, 30, 60, 90, which is the same thing as 60, 30, 90, right? So let's take this down and keep this in mind. This is pretty important. So we're going to come back to this and 
uh, delve a little deeper into this, okay, when we start generating a table for this thing. But right now what we're going to do is draw our special triangles here and um, take a look at what our trig ratios are for these special triangles. 